Hello, uh, you're back with Mike Mason, uh, uh, line editor for Colour Cthulhu at Curzium, and today I'm with uh, Brian Kortemans. I didn't say that right, did I, Brian? How do no, I pronounce fine. your name? That's fine, Brian Kortemans, it's great. Kortemans, that's right, okay, I was, I was nearly right, I think, so, uh, no, no, Brian. <laughs> Brian, Hello. Um, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us, um, you know, why, uh, why would I be speaking to you? My goodness gracious. Um, yeah, you must have lost a bet somewhere. Um, but uh, no, uh, my name is Brian Cortemanch, and uh, I'm very fortunate. I've been, I've been playing Call of Cthulhu for many, many years. Uh, and I've been very lucky to, uh, to, to be able to, uh, to uh, write a few things and, um, and, and get them uh, published with Chaosium. And, and so, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's great. So that's probably why we're talking today. That sounds that sounds good. Um, so, when did you start role playing, Brian? How long has it been? Oh my goodness! Uh, shoot, uh, sometime in the early '80s, um, uh, uh, junior high school. I remember it. Uh, I have sort of fuzzy memories. I remember sitting on the school bus, and there were a couple of kids in the seat in front of me talking about how they had just stabbed the guy. And uh, I, I said, "Wait a minute!" Uh, you know, I knew these kids. I said, "There's no way these two stabbed the guy." So I kind of leaned over the seat. I said, what are you all talking about? You didn't stab any, or, you know, or who'd you stab or what happened? And they said, no, no, no. They said, we, we play, uh, at that time it was, you know, we played, uh, we played Dungeons and Dragons. And I said, well, what's that? And it just sort of went from there. So that was probably, I want to say 1982, somewhere there, 1982, 1983. Um, and then soon after, uh, I started playing, uh, well, I started playing a D and D because that's what we knew, and then uh, I yeah. discovered Call of Cthulhu probably around 1986, and uh, fell in love with it. And um, you know, it's been my main game ever since. So uh, you know, uh, yeah, that's so that's the. I mean, lots and lots of games, lots and lots of friends made, and um, it's just been a wonderful, uh, wonderful um, hobby and lifestyle. And and uh, so yeah, yeah. Yeah, great. Um, when did you? Um... When did you start kind of writing? Um, I mean, was it, did you start writing for role-playing games or were you already writing, you know, fiction or other things or? Well, uh, I really, I've been writing for, just for myself ever since uh, probably I was 10 or 11 years old. In fact, I still use, um, I don't know if this will be a video chat or just audio, <laughs> but I'm holding up a, uh, a sort of a composition, like an old school composition notebook. And I still, uh, I've, been I've been writing my own diary for many, many years. So it started there, just sort of scribbling to myself. And then um, uh, I started writing, um, just for my home table, I started writing adventures, role-playing game adventures. Um, and then um, uh, was, was uh, at one point, some years ago, I said, you know, I love Call of Cthulhu. I love, this is my favorite game. Uh, maybe I'll just reach out to Chaosium and see if they wouldn't mind me trying to scribble for them a little bit. And um, and then at the time, it was Lynn Willis at the time had reached, uh, got back to me and said, well, let's maybe you can help us with like proofreading. Let's see what you can. So it just kind of went from there. I did some proofing on some things. And then after that, um, they got back to me and said, how about how about you try to send us a writing sample, send us some ideas. And it just kind of went from there. So um so, so I've always been, uh, been writing and scribbling and, and things, um, but it really was, I haven't written anything, um, uh, I haven't written any, any uh, uh, short stories or novels or magazine articles. It's always been uh, game writing that I've, that I've um, uh, worked for uh, in terms of publication. Okay. Um, so um, what was the first... Um... The first thing you wrote for for Chaosium, then? Mm. Uh, gosh, I think it was uh, a scenario. I, other than the sort of the the, the proofreading and, and making little comments here and there, but I would say the first thing that I was that I wrote was uh, it was in Terrors from Beyond, uh, and I believe the scenario. Gosh, it goes. I'm going back in the Wayback Machine now. It was in the uh, the scenario book Terrors from Beyond, and I want to say it was. Um, it was called Grave Secrets. It was a it was a, a New England based. I think it was called Grave or Buried Secrets. I think it was called Buried Secrets. Um, you think I would know? You know, I wrote it, but it was it was <laughs> gosh getting on 
it's getting on probably a decade or more now since it, since it came out. But I do remember the 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 the, the book itself was is Terrace from Beyond. I can see the the um the the cover of it quite vividly in my mind, and uh, I believe it was called Buried Secrets, a short scenario in that book. Yeah, I mean, you went on to. Um... I think you wrote quite a lot for the Arkham Now book. Is that right? You certainly did yeah, a scenario. Yeah, that, yeah, that was um, that was something that happened. Uh, uh, Lynn, um, I think it was Lynn at the time, was very gracious, and because uh, I wrote Terrace from Beyond, and then he said, "Well, you're a New Englander, maybe you can uh, you can write this Arkham Now." Um, and I said, "Sure." And then I then I thought about it after saying "sure," and I got terrified <laughs> and uh, uh, r- realized that boy, this is this is something. So um, I, I got a friend of mine uh, who also has, has played a lot of Call of Cthulhu uh, and, and has written some things. His name is Matt Sanborn. And I said, Matt, uh, I jumped in the deep end with Occam Now. Uh, and he said, well, you know, I said, we're going to let's let's write it together. And um, and I asked permission from Chaosium if, if Matt could come on board. And they said, OK. And um, and we wrote that. I want to say that was maybe 2008, 2009, somewhere in there. And um, so that was, I think that was my second writing project for Chaosium. And, you know, looking back, I, I probably do a lot of things differently, but uh, hopefully it's brought some, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm proud of it. But um, at that time, I think I was still getting my feet under me in terms of writing professionally. Uh, and so I, I just hope it's brought some some value to people and they've enjoyed it. Certainly, Chaosium took it and, and, uh, and took what we wrote and, and helped us get it to to a place where it could be it could be published and so sure. I, I do hope people enjoyment yeah yeah and no, i think it's an interesting book um i, I think um, just before i joined um Chaosium, uh, you'd um you'd contributed to a couple of scenario books i think um, house of relay and um the other one was the atomic age cthulhu um, that's correct how, yep. how were those uh, how, what was it like working on those Oh, uh, it was great. Um, one thing about working with with Chaosium, uh, it, it really does introduce you to a whole network of writers. So I was very, very fortunate. I've been very, very fortunate to be invited in on a number of projects, and um, and uh, so so that's probably the one of the the benefits uh, that I've enjoyed is just the association of other writers and creative people. Um, so it's been great working on those things. It's been great uh, dreaming up these ideas. Uh, Play testing them with friends and and people in my local gaming circle because uh, as you as you know what you dream up and how you think it's going to go versus what really happens at the table uh, are are two very different things. So it's a great opportunity to to get it, get material to the table and uh, and have people play through it and find out what worked and what didn't. So um, so it's been it's been a great experience writing for for all of these publications. Uh, um, and especially, you know, sort of looking at different eras uh, with House of Relier, we were trying to the idea. I think that was David Conyers was was our project person, our sort of our lead person on that. And the idea was to uh, to try to find a Lovecraft story and sort of riff off of the Lovecraft story. How would you take it, uh, either follow up on it or take it in a different direction? So that was a very interesting um, exercise. And then the sort of the remit for Atomic Age Cthulhu was you know, find something from that era uh, and and try to hang your hat on that. And, and how would you turn that into something Call of Cthulhu? And so uh, that was an interesting challenge. So that's one of the neat things about Call of Cthulhu is that it really does span all realities, all eras, all realities. Uh, the mythos is everywhere. So with every new project, there's been an opportunity to take the mythos or an aspect of the mythos into a new um, a new realm, a new a new genre or a new universe, and it's uh, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, certainly the um, your scenario in um, Atomic Age Cthulhu, I think it's uh, L.A. Diabolical. Yes, um, L.A. Diabolical. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I that that I think that was probably one one uh, one in that collection I particularly enjoyed uh, because. Um, there, there was uh, you. You had drawn inspiration from the, um, I guess, what you might call the uh, the occult scene of uh, of LA. You know, in the fifties, with um, people like Anton LaVey and so forth, and 
and I thought you'd captured that pretty well. That kind of uh, that kind of sense of um, you know, Hollywood stars and and hangers on kind of you know uh, trying to you know find ways to um, improve their careers. I guess is one yeah. way to look at it. Yeah. I guess it was it was an interesting time. So, um, you know, uh, not having lived through it and certainly, um, you know, uh, something that I, I wanted to explore in a fictional context. And uh, and and certainly, uh, um, you know, so I, I was able to kind of riff on it uh, in my own way and, and sort of take it in a completely fictional, uh, you know, direction and, uh, and 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 allow people to maybe through the games kind of play in that world for a little while. So. So hopefully people have found it entertaining and enjoyable. And, and certainly, you know, it goes off in its own crazy directions. It's, you know, it's 100 uh, percent, you know, uh, uh, fiction and, and, and craziness. Uh, but hopefully people have found it to be a good time. Yeah, no, I think I think that one would uh, probably work well for both. Uh, well, it clearly, you know, it, it works certainly well for Call of Cthulhu. But I think um, I think that probably if you're uh, if you're uh, playing Pulp Cthulhu, I think that one could probably translate pretty well to uh, to pulp as well, given the uh, the kind of milieu that you're in. Uh, yeah, but um, true. What, um, what what do you have a particular process when you're writing a scenario, Brian? Is there a particular kind of um, um, process or format you follow? Um, do the does the how does you know do the uh, does the idea come first, or do you kind of work out? Uh, do you have a a kind of a start or an ending in mind that kind of kicks you off. You know, I know different people use you know different kind of methods. I guess for me, it's it's pretty loose. Um, I, I guess there are two things that I that I probably start with, um, and then they kind of firm up through the writing process. Uh, the first thing I start up with is to find out what the project manager, what the person, or what 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 is what is needed uh, first and foremost. Uh, uh, what 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 is the project uh, in terms of, of uh, what is the what are we going for? And I try to uh, find out from the project leader, the project manager, the lead author, whoever it might be, yourself. Often, um, you know, what what are we going for with this with this project? So th that I try to get that very quickly, um, so I can get my mental fingers around it. And then the other thing that I try to pair it up with often is the human angle. I mean, the mythos is alien and unknowable. Uh, and and sort of our 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 minds can't really wrap our heads around Cthulhu uh, or or Naharlathotep really. So uh, you know we call Naharlathotep often we call it he, but do we know what what Naharlathotep really is? Uh, same thing with Cthulhu. We say Big C or he. We don't we don't know what that thing is, and that's even in terms of something as basic as gender. Um, it, it, I mean, in applying the concept of gender to such creatures, we don't or things. Anyway, I guess what I'm trying to say is. We, when I write a scenario, I try to zoom in on uh, the human impact of the mythos. Um, uh, how we might not be able to understand the mythos, but we're all humans, and we can basically understand human motivations, uh, human reactions. Um, so, so uh, even if sometimes we goof, I'm the king of of of, of goofing uh, goofing things up. But but we can all we can all um, basically understand what it is to be human. And so what I try to do is I say, well, we've got this fantastic mythos, this unbelievable, strange, uh, cosmic reality that is impinging on human life, human awareness. So I try to, whenever I'm working on a scenario, I'm, I'm thinking, well, how do the humans react in this? How are the humans going to, what shenanigans or what sort of fallout is going to happen when the humans get a taste of this? And I think that's what provides the impetus for the scenario and maybe provides a bit of a hook because the players sitting around the table can relate, uh, hopefully to the to the to what's going on, because it's. Uh, they can maybe their, their investigators can relate to the motivations of the NPCs or at least try to understand the NPCs a little bit. So I don't I don't know if that answered your question, Mike. I, I, I'm kind of I'm kind of dancing around a little bit. I don't know if that <laughs> quite fits to it as far yeah, as my no. process. But I think I think I think I think that does. I think I think you're absolutely right. I think, you know, ultimately, uh, you know, in, in the games that we play, um, you know, using these scenarios, uh, they are human stories. I mean, you know, the characters you're playing is a human. They're interacting with the other characters, the other player characters and the 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 NPCs and so on in, in the game. And yes, there, yeah, there may be monsters and magic and things like that. But you 
but your interactions with those are tend to be you tend to be limited to extent to maybe running away, fighting it, or, or you know, screaming in terror. Um, but um, but in terms of actually engaging in dialogue and uh, and the motivations behind the characters involved, that's that's what interests us. That's what builds a story. Um, and so uh, I think you know, as you say, concentrating on those kind of the human interactions is is what you know is what the basis of all the stories are about, really. Because um, without that, it is you know, it's it's a very particular you know uh, thing you know it's you can have a kind of survival horror you know where you're just dealing with you know calamity after calamity and reacting and that kind of thing and that's cool but you know uh but what's great about call of cthulhu is you know you can tell other stories as well and uh, particularly you know very character driven kind of things where the the mythos is you know uh influencing corrupting whatever it may be the characters in the game and, and you're you know you're trying to work that out and deal with the situation so so i you know i completely get what you're saying um which i, I think i guess is an easy lead in really uh, into um a scenario like star brothers which is uh, again a you know i'd say a pretty strong strongly character driven scenario um obviously that's part of the flotsam and jetsam um campaign we're you know we're putting out as free at the moment as part of the our organized play um, uh, program um, and Star Brothers is the first story that kind of kicks that off. Uh, do you want to uh, maybe give people a little bit of an overview about what Star Brothers is about or you know, how you worked on it? Oh, sure. Um, I'd be happy to. Uh, and I'll try to do it in a way that doesn't give any secrets away so that for those folks that may not have ex had had a uh, chance yet to see it or play it, uh, I don't want to spoil it for them. Um, but uh, Star Brothers, as you say, is the first episode or scenario in the organized play campaign that Chaosium is, is currently releasing, which is, is fantastic. Um, uh, I believe that uh, uh, the second one has just come out, uh, has just been yeah. released by, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, by, by John Anthony uh, uh, Dudley, I believe. Is, is that, if I get the, yeah, John, yeah, An yeah. Anthony. Yeah. Um, That's so, the one. But Star Brothers is, is the first one. Um, and it starts out the, the, the investigators are uh, are called in um, by the editorial offices of Strange But True, which is a uh, is a uh, sort of a, a newspaper or tabloid. Think of like Weekly World News or or National Enquirer. That's what I, I that's the sort of uh, sort of how I view it. Other other tables might might give it a little more uh, different angle. But but essentially um, the. Uh, the, the, the investigators are called in uh, to be um, uh, brought in by the editors of Week, Weekly World uh, uh, News. Uh, not what do you, uh, strange, the, uh, but strange, but, strange but true. Uh, and uh, that's Elijah Cleaver is the uh, is the editor in chief over there, and he has picked up on a story coming off of uh, coming out of uh, the North Shore of Massachusetts by a local small town paper that. Uh, uh, talks about this strange uh, person that is uh, going around a small town in, in uh, Massachusetts and is, is gathering up all kinds of strange artifacts, strange items uh, from hardware stores and other places about town and putting together some sort of a strange uh, device so that he can uh, go back to the stars, that he believes he's from, he's from outer space and uh, he needs to contact his, uh, his star brothers, his star brethren, to pick him up and take him away, uh, and the Elijah, the, the editor in chief, says, "Well, this guy could be a kook. He could just be a, a, a crazy person." But there seems to be a little bit more to this story. There could be something more to this than just the hack job that's been done by the local town paper. So the investigators are called in to go to this small town in Massachusetts on the coast and find this, if they can, find this person who is uh, claiming to be from the stars and just find out if there's a deeper story here. Is there something really going on? Is he from outer space or what, what's the story? Uh, and, um, and, uh, and, and just see if they can dig, dig a little deeper and find something that can be used by uh, strange, but true. So that's what kicks things off because there are certain, uh, again, I don't want to give away any, any surprises, but there are other interested parties in this person who have a vested interest in seeing things kind of uh, uh, not go the way the investigators might want it to go. And uh, so, so things happen. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've run this scenario, uh, you know, a number of times now. You know, in terms of sort of trying it out and getting a feel for it, and uh, and uh, it's always run really well. We've, I've always had a really good time um, running it with uh, with different groups. And um, there, there's one point actually. One 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 uh, one of the times I ran it, I um, when they when they visit a certain house, um, I had uh, had the lady of the house. With lots of pictures on in in, in frames of the, of the family, uh, and when they looked more closely at these pictures, they realised they were all cut out of magazines or newspapers, and they weren't the same. They but 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 she referred to them all as you know as as her family, and um, and that one of the players at the end came up to me and said, "When that happened, I was absolutely scared out." <laughs> It just yeah. really kind of hit me, and uh, so <laughs> it was. Uh, yeah, it, 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 and uh, and then the uh, you know it's difficult to say more, but um, but uh, the the kind of shenanigans that then ensued, and uh, the various kind of um, interested parties involved in the scenario, uh, you know, makes for a, you know makes for a quite a um, climactic end to it, and uh, with lots going on. So we, you know, I think. Uh, you know, certainly I've enjoyed it. So <laughs> I hope others will. Thank you. Thank you. It's funny. Thank you, Mike. It, it remind. It, it, it's funny you should mention that 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 scene with the pictures. Um, I've I've also run it a number of times, as you can imagine. Um, but that has come up again and again. That sort of it, I've had. I, I ran it actually. I just ran it uh, last week for. I work at a campus here, and I have some uh, some some folks from the campus that I ran it for. Uh, we, we haven't gotten all the way through. We're actually playing again this Friday um, for part two. Uh, but uh, that was that was the, the, the creepiest thing that they encountered. One of the one of the players after the game said almost the same thing. The creepiest thing was the were those pictures. And when I was putting it together, um, I I almost thought it would be a joke factor, or it would wouldn't necessarily be as creepy as it as it's played out again yeah. and again as I've run it for people. Um, that's really gotten to people. I'm not sure why it's. I, I I almost thought it would be sort of a huh or a sort of a head scratcher or sort of a kind of a ah now we get what's going on with this lady or or uh, almost a, a chuckle. Uh, but 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 it, it really affects some people. They see that and it really bothers them. That that scene with the pictures. I'm not sure myself why that is, but it has had that creep out factor. No, absolutely. I, th I don't know if it's something to do with like, you know, it, it's all very normal. Everything seems okay. And then you kind of catch, you kind of, the penny drops and you kind of realize actually, no, this isn't what we thought. This isn't okay. And they kind of, I think maybe that <laughs> what creeps people out. I don't know, but uh, yeah, certainly, certainly. But uh, yes, I mean, um, so yeah, so we've got the first two, uh, scenarios of, of uh, Flotsam and Jetsam out now, and there's two more coming out. One, you know, uh, I think the next one's on the 15th of November, and then 15th of December to uh, to reach the kind of the conclusion. But uh, I had a lot of help from Scott Dorwood. Uh, he was he was uh, um, the sort of person that I that I, I leaned on for for help and guidance, and it did some editorial. and And Scott is is wonderful. Um, he really did help me frame it. Um, and uh, provided wonderful um, assistance to me as I was writing it and great feedback. Um, and so um, I'm very lucky to work with uh, with Scott and yourself and a number of people that I, I think that's that's another thing I should mention that that when you write one of these things, it really is a team effort. Like my fingers may be going onto the keyboard to come up with some of this stuff, but it really is a group effort in so many ways uh, from from what sort of gets dreamed up in my head to what people are able to enjoy at their home table. Uh, it's gone through so many sets of eyes and so many uh, rounds of revisions and play tests um, and, and artists and, and layout people. And uh, there's a lot of people that get that, that, that make something like this happen. So even though I'm lucky to get a bit of credit as far as writing it, I think uh, it's only I, I'm I'm lucky to be uh, to be with a, a wonderful group of people, all of whom play a part. Whether it's the artists, the layout people, the, the editors, uh, it is is a team effort um, to get one of these things out. 
Well, I think that's, you know, that is absolutely true, Brian. The, uh, you know, the, <laughs> I think uh, sometimes I, I meet people and they kind of, you know, don't really understand the kind of the process, as you say, that goes into, you know, producing a, you know, a game book in this way that actually it's not, you know, there, there is, you know, the, obviously it starts with the writer in that sense of, you know, that it's their creation that kind of is the, the fuel and the fire that, that kind of really moves it forward. Um, but as you say, you know, you then bring in artists and and uh, cartographers and then, you know, people like uh, Nick Nicario, who, you know, puts it all together and makes it, makes it what you see on the page and so on. And you know, not to you know, mention, you know, proofreaders and so on and everyone else. Uh, but it is a very much a collaboration. But, um, you know, what, what we want to try and do is uh, ensure that that you know the writer's vision for their scenario is you know is the is the beating heart of everything because without that we we have nothing so i think you know the writer's role is you know obviously particularly important um and so you know we we try to make sure that that process is as painless and enjoyable as possible it's, you know, <laughs> writing isn't uh, isn't necessarily an easy thing for anyone um but if there's a way that we can make sure people um you know don't find it too onerous and they you know they get you know they get uh they get some enjoyment out of it and obviously when the finished product comes along uh you can see you know see their work in print is uh you know it's always a cool thing i always think it's a cool thing so uh hopefully uh everyone else does too um so before before i let you go brian uh i think let's just briefly mention uh uh one of your newest scenarios that's uh, not yet published that will be coming out in uh, as part, well as part of the you know, the updated and revised Dreamlands book for Call of Cthulhu, um, I think uh, the scenario is called "The Best of Intentions." Would yes. you tell us a bit about that? Sure. Uh, it, it, I wrote it some time ago, um, so the memories are a little foggy. Uh, but as I and I've written materials since then, so it all it's all up in here. And this is a very uh, <laughs> in a, you know this is a, a very uh, doubtful engine these days uh but uh as i recall uh yes the investigators are brought in there's a missing child and uh the investigators are brought in uh at the at uh to investigate the the missing the situation with the missing child it takes place in and around kingsport massachusetts so there's a there's a connection to the old town there that hpl wrote about uh and you um because it's for the Dreamlands, again, I don't want to give away uh, too many secrets, um, but there's a, of course, there's a Dreamlands element. That's obvious. It's in the Dreamlands uh, book. Uh, but so it's sort of a combination of trying to, you run around uh, a Kingsport in the, in the waking world, and then there's a section where you uh, uh, have an opportunity to learn more about the Dreamlands, and you have to sort of accomplish certain things uh, in the waking world and in, in the Dreamlands to... Um, to find out what's happened with this with this missing child, to see if, if there's a possibility of, of a rescue or of any kind of happy ending or understanding. And uh, depending on how that goes, um, well, uh, there's, th that, that's very much a question mark, what, what <laughs> happens. So, um, so uh, I, I, again, I don't want to give away, give away this, the, 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 the secrets. I want people to, to uh, experience it at the table. But hopefully... Uh, it will entertain and it will sort of open up a few more corners of, of both Kingsport and the Dreamland so that people can make it their own and sort of explore in those worlds. So, so yeah, so that, uh, that, that's, um, that's, a, that should be, a, I hope, hopefully it, it'll be a good time for people to, to have, to do adventure through and explore. Um, I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. It's a, it's a great scenario. And uh, when we, uh, you know, we, we're, we're going to, well, some work has already begun on the actual development of the, you know, the, the revised Dreamlands and uh, we're hopefully, you know, that will bear fruit uh, sometime next year, all being well. Um, so oh. we're, you know, keen to get that book out as soon as we can, but obviously as you appreciate, there's a fair bit of work to do as well. So, but, uh, but yeah, so uh, yes, you can see, uh, you know, more, more Brian Cordemont scenarios uh, coming soon uh, from Kersim and I think some of our, licensees you've been writing for yes. you know some of our licensees as well so uh people can you know pretty easily uh pick up uh various things you've done i, I would have thought uh yeah. we've got a uh, uh, new comet games uh has, has got a, a kickstarter live right now for uh a, a call of cthulhu uh, book of adventures that are taking place in the yucatan 
uh, and it's called a, a, a time uh, a time for sacrifice. And so um, uh, Ben Burns is the is the lead author. He's also the sort of uh, master of ceremonies over at New Comic Games, and and uh, he was very kind to invite me to to write up a scenario for that. So um, so that's in process right now. Um, people are are contributing to the Kickstarter, and uh, hopefully we'll have a very entertaining. Um, a book of, of scenarios for them in the very near future so that's that's shaping up uh, as well yeah that looks that looks pretty cool i have to say yes looks great well thanks for thanks for um taking some time out brian to uh, have a chat and uh, you know talk about uh, call of cthulhu and writing and the wonders <laughs> of uh, scenario creation it's much appreciated well Thank, thank you, Mike, for having me on, and, and for uh, I hope I haven't sort of in, inflicted myself too badly on on your <laughs> listeners uh, and your and your viewers. Uh, um, it's always a, it's always a pleasure to talk with you and to talk about my favorite game, uh, and um, you know, and to hear about all the exciting things that are going on with with Call of Cthulhu. It's really um, heading into. I mean, there's been so many exciting things going on with the game. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger and better and better, and so. I'm just delighted that I discovered it all those years ago and I'm able to continue the association with the game and, and with Chaosium and with all the, the wonderful people I've met uh, through my my knowing the game and playing the game. It's probably the best part is is just getting to know people and uh, um, and, and and creating together and exploring together. It's just a, it's just a fun ride. No, absolutely. Well, thanks again, Brian. And uh... Uh, hopefully, uh, I'll see you in Providence in a year or two's time again. So. All right. Very good, Mike. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.